Facebook friends and my uh, Wellness News YouTube channel uh, followers. So today, Cinco de Mayo. Um, we don't need translation for that, 5th of May, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. Um, so this afternoon on Today Cinco de Mayo, we had a conversation on Facebook. We had a lot of people looking, um, some questions on, on Facebook that came out, but I also said, uh, reminded people that we had a, a interview. I had an interview this morning with KPFK. Um, the um, interviewer was Margaret Prescott from the Sojourn Show. And thank you and a, and a shout out to the Sojourn Show. Uh, it was a great interview and thank you for, for the opportunity to be on. Um, but we got into, into depth of what Cinco de Mayo is. And yes, you know, over the years and decades, uh, of course you have commercialization. And if I had a Mexican restaurant, I'd probably do a Cinco de Mayo special too. I mean, who, who would it, right? You have a bar, you have something, but what is a holiday? You know, and I made the argument that just like Christmas is commercialized, a lot of things get commercialized, but there's a meaning behind it. What, 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 what occurred behind that holiday? Um, and you have to discuss it. And, you know, everyone always says, well, you know, Christmas lost its meaning. Well, it did. It did. Christmas for some. But what happens every few years? There's a discussion. There's education. And that's why we always have to keep educating each other on what's going on. All right. So in the last few days, we had some great interviews. We had Dolores Huerta. What did Dolores Huerta say? Look, if you're young, you have to keep organizing. And if we're going to defeat and if Donald Trump is going to be defeated, that means we have to be able to become, you know, um, ninjas in social uh, media and be able to communicate. And the 47 percent of Latinos who voted last time, we've got to get up that we've got to get to 60 percent. What did Marielena Durazo said that it's unconscionable that 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 Latinos aren't voting at huge numbers. All right. And what did Tony um, Tony Carnas say yesterday? He said, look, we should have a Latina as a VP. We shouldn't apologize for it and we should demand it all the way. And if we're not going to get a, a Latina as a vice presidential nominee, then what's the Democratic Party going to do for Latinos? Well, someone's going to say, well, is it all about ethnicity? Well, what's the interview with Tony Carnas? And Tony Carnas said, look, you're not investing in Latino voters. And you're saying that we don't vote, but yet you disrespect us by not investing in the advertising, hiring um, um, organizers. So today was an opportunity in terms of Cinco de Mayo. What was Cinco de Mayo about? It was David versus Goliath. It was the, the Mexican forces telling the French, we are smart enough to kick you out, now go. And ultimately, you know, you had uh, General Ignacio Zaragoza, born in Texas, a free Texas, was the leading general, kicked out the French. Yes, the French later, you know, came in, but they got kicked out ultimately, right? So it, it was, someone says, well, Mexican, Cinco de Mayo is not independence. But it was a re-independence. You have, uh, uh, 16 de septiembre, first the kicking out of the French, right? And people forget, a few years earlier from Cinco de Mayo, you had the U.S., the War of 1848. Mexico loses half of its territory. So what do we do now? Mexico wins against the, the, the French. Self-respect comes back to the country. That's powerful. And as Mexican-American, Cinco de Mayo has that sense of, hey, you know what? We're getting our respect back. And you know what? And that's what the Bernie Sanders campaign did, is that we said we matter. You, Democratic Party, ultimately, I'm not even mentioning the Republican Party because they just don't like this. Like, like Dolores uh, Huerta said in 2006, you know, Republicans hate Latinos. Um, so today, uh, we, I wanted to, to play the interview from KPFK. And again, shout out to, uh, to KPFK, Pacifica, The Sojourn Show, and Margaret Prescott. Thank you. All right. So now what do, we, what do you need to do? So you're at Well in the News. You're at YouTube. Well in the News. All right. Right there. Press subscribe, please. All right, we're, we're trying to build that, that movement and every time a new video comes up, you'll get automatic notice, it's absolutely free. If you're on our Facebook page, share the videos, just go ahead and share them. If you disagree with anything I'm saying, great, we welcome your disagreement. Email us at wellmanews at gmail.com. Tell us why you're disagreeing. Be part of the conversation that we're trying to have. At Twitter, the handle is Gabriel underscore Buelna. Follow on Instagram and on Snapchat as, as well. I'm not a TikTok guy, all right? Not TikTok, not doing that TikToks. I like TikToks, not the TikTok. 
All right. To no further ado, Brass Tacks here. Fernando. Today, Mark's Play the audio. Mile, mainly celebrated in the United States, even though it has uh, roots in Mexico. Just repeating a bit of what you might have missed earlier. Uh, the Battle of Puebla resulted in a victory for the Mexican army and uh, defeating the French. And that was really the start of um, the reason Cinco de Mayo is marked. Now, normally huge celebrations are held in Puebla and several cities across Mexico honoring Cinco de Mayo, although I'm told that a lot of it mainly happens in the United States, interestingly enough. There are reenactments, performances, and food festivals are staples of these celebrations uh, within the diaspora, especially in cities with large Mexican populations from Mexico. Um, this is particularly true in New York City, interestingly enough. Public celebrations are also held. Uh, what I'd like to do is to welcome now our guest, Gabriel um, uh, Buena. Dr. Gabriel Buena holds a doctorate in political science from the Claremont School of Politics and Economics, is a faculty member in Chicana Chicano Studies at Cal State Northridge, and a trustee at the Los Angeles Community College District. Um, so, Gabriel Buena, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, so clear up some confusion uh, for us. Um, I'm hearing two things. On the one hand, that in some parts of Mexico, generally there are large celebrations for Cinco de Mayo. On the other hand, that, well, a lot of people across Mexico don't really pay that much attention to it, and most of it happens, the celebrations happen in the United States. Is that actually true? And why? if so, why do you think that is? Well, I, I think Cinco de Mayo is misunderstood. Yes, Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day, but it is a reestablished to a certain extent of Mexican independence. And it's, it is tied to the United States because most people, for instance, forget that, that September 16th is also California's Independence Day from Spain because it was our independence from the monarch. So during that time period, a lot of, uh, let me give you an example. General Ignacio Zaragoza, who was the main general during that, the battle in Puebla against the French, was Mexican American. He was born in, in what is, in what is today Texas. So, so to look at, at just Puebla and Mexico, just as Mexico under the current boundaries, no. It was a, because you had the Spanish, the French, and the British wanting to attack Mexico and really take control again. And from the for, from the and it was a battle between the conservatives and the liberals, and the liberals and Cinco de Mayo was basically protecting the rights of Mexico to be free of religion, to have the right of freedom of religion, freedom of speech. The liberal and so Cinco de Mayo helped help protect Mexico, reestablish its independence. So it's not a it's not a small holiday, even though the French went on to to win later. The fact that Mexico and through Ignacio Zaragoza, Benito Juarez, were able to defend Mexico showed that, you know what, we were able to kick out the French in, in 1812. We may have lost half of our territory in, in 1848, but we kept our dignity in, 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 in the Battle of Puebla. And that's important to many Mexican Americans because. You know, to, you know, as you, you know, we're, we're told no bilingual education, you can't speak Spanish, we lose a lot of cultural rights. So Cinco de, Mado, Cinco de Mayo is kind of David against Goliath. So, yes, it's spread in the United States. Yes, it may be commercialized. Christmas is commercialized. That doesn't mean we don't celebrate Christmas and are always trying to find the meaning of Christmas. You know, so Cinco de Mayo is again, again, that reestablishment. You even see actors come in the scene. Porfirio Diaz is, that's where he gets his, which isn't positive for Mexico, um, but, you know, moves on to, to become um, a, a dictator for a few decades. But really, it's the, it's the establishment of the Mexican state of freedom, of freedom of the press, removing the Catholic Church, and not the Catholic Church that we have here today. Most people forget that the Catholic Church controlled land titles. Uh, were the judges and the juries in all of Mexico. So Cinco de Mayo was profound. It, it sent the message that me as Mexicans and as Chicanos, as Mexican-Americans, we can hold our own against Goliath. 
And you know, so that's why Cinco de Mayo is such is such pride and 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 celebrated. You know, um, yeah, it was celebrated in the '80s, but you had Mecha organizations in the '60s and '70s celebrating it a, a, as well. And maybe Mexican Americans did because, again, we saw we were constantly seeing ourselves defending ourselves against cultural imperialism. So that's that's what occurred, and is occurring. Right, and and tell us, you know, uh, there so many of us who live in the United States know so little about the Southern neighbor, about Mexico and Mexico's history. Tell us about Mexico's first indigenous uh, president, Benito Juarez Garcia. Well, you had a, a, a interesting Benito, Benito Juarez from the state of Oaxaca, um, which is you know one of Mexico's um, with the with the large indigenous population. That was that that became an attorney. Most people, you know, forget that Benito Juarez was an attorney um, that fought it, that 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 fought as well to 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 lead Mexico, um, and really, you know, as one of its first pr- uh, president of indigenous descent, really protected it against and wasn't against European cultural imperialism and physical imperialism, and and Benito Juarez also. Um, um, also developed a strong relationship because he spent time in in Louisiana with the United States and developing ties with the Union Army. So because Benito Juarez, and he was a Mason as well, and because Benito Juarez was able to develop a strong relationship using his legal skills, he was able to prevent the United States from coming in with the French and to use his powers in Washington to prevent the Spanish and the British from joining the French. So, so Cinco de Mayo was a triumph of indigenous diplomacy in Mexico. That's why, of course, it's a battle, you know, a battle, and, and yeah, it's not Mexico's independence, but there are many days of Mexico's independence because there are different Mexican independence days. But the connection towards the United States is very strong because during that time period, you know, it was a time of transition. Um, you know, at, during that time period, for instance, Texas, uh, uh, um, you know, when, when General Ignacio Zaragoza, Texas was, was a free state under Mexico, did not have slavery. You know, um, so a lot of things changed because of the War of 1848. Um, you know, that gave the Confederates a lot of, a lot of resources, which then kind of led to a lot of t- tumultuousness in Mexico, which led to, you know, the French wanting to, to, um, to take over Mexico, install a uh, Maximilian, and also to actually, actually the French wanted to control American dominance in the Western Hemisphere. So it's complicated, but during that battle, Mexican indigenous forces were able to win, and that's a big deal. And that caught the spirit of Mexican Americans because we're constantly an underdog, as we can see right now with the Trump administration. We're constantly an, an underdog, being accused of things. Um, you know, um, let's say, in, in, you know, is, is Biden even considering a Latina uh, for VP? So it has modern uh, connections towards, you know, the, you know, it, it, towards being the David and Goliath. Um, you know, and it, 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 yeah, so that's that's the effect that it has. Yeah, and you know, also some people are making the connection with what was going on uh, with the French invasion, uh, attempted invasion, and what was happening in the United States because the Civil War was underway. Do you have Do you have any thoughts about how one might have impacted the other? Well, look, w- without without the U.S. Mexico without the U.S. Mexico War. You know, you, you had a lot of uh, Confederate generals, Union generals who were trained in, 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 in Mexico. And you had the South that gained. Uh, most people forget that Arizona was a Confederate, um, even w- though it wasn't a state, it was a Confederate region. Um, you had the growth of, of, of slavery because of the U.S.-Mexico War. Mexico was on the right side of that, was trying to prevent slavery. So you had, you know, so the, I mean, the, the, the U.S.-Mexico War kind of propelled a lot of the resources that were able to do it. Plus, Benito Juarez assisted the, the Union side. And that's very important because when, when, when the Union won, they remembered and assisted um, Benito Juarez 
as an attorney, he was able to, when he spent time in the United States, he was able to set up a lot of those relationships that later benefited uh, Mexico. And the United States did not want um, a, a, a French presence in Mexico because the United States also wanted to really have a, you know, kind of a hegemonic uh, control over the Western Hemisphere. So that's why it, it's, it's um, you know, it, it wasn't a small battle. It really set the tone for a lot of what we're, what we're dealing with, uh, with, with today. Um, I have some, some uh, uh, to, my, to my YouTube channel, Buena News, or BuenaNews.com. I have a lot of videos on a lot of these discussions, and I want to invite them. Thank you for your time. Right, yeah, no, I was going to ask if for, for people who want to be in touch with you uh, what they should do, and certainly visiting the website at BuenaNews.com is one way to do that. And uh, also, uh, Dr. Uh, Gabriel Buelna, give us your Twitter, your handle on Twitter as well. Um, Gabri- my handle is Gabriel under- underscore um, Buelna, and feel free to follow me. And again, at YouTube, Buelna News, and subscribe. We have a new interview with um, we have an interview with Dolores Huerta that we did on a lot of these issues. In fact, Dolores Huerta mentioned she she's been in the United States um, for actually her her family who has always been here. And we always have to remember as Mexican Americans, which Cinco de Mayo focuses on. A lot of us have always been here, and the border crossed us. So, you know, our, 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 our histories are not just them, us. They affect a lot of things. And, and it's silly to say, oh, it's just a holiday of, of beer and, and alcohol. Well, that may be true for certain sectors, but the meanings are always there, and they always have to be retaught. Just like, just like every other holiday, they have to be retaught as to what the core of the structure of why they existed and were created from the get-go. And that's why we're continuously learning. And that's an expectation uh, for society in general. Right. Well, on that note, I'm afraid we are out of time, so we're going to have to leave Thank it you. there. But uh, Dr. Gabrielle Buelna, um, who is a faculty member in Chicano, Chicano Studies at Cal State Northridge, a trustee at the Los Angeles Community College District. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you could join us again. Dr. Bill, My pleasure. Thank you.